Welcome to the Fiber Shop tutorial series. This is the first chapter which we learn about the user interface and basics. This is the first look you see when you run Fiber Shop. Let's take a very quick look at the software to get a background and basic realization of each part. Then we're going to learn each part and more details. There's three main parts in the user interface. Menus, sidebars and viewport. We start a new project, we create two hair blocks, we model them using modifiers and bake them using BakeTap. And in the end, we export them to use them in a third-party software like 3ds Max. There are only three menus at the moment. File menu contains the options that let you save your project, open it and renew the entire project, export the specific hair block or entire hair blocks and import them back. You can use the exit option to close the software. Edit menu only has one option which lets you reset global preferences of Fibershop, which is edit table and preferences tab. And the last menu contains some helpful links like YouTube channel, Discord server, online documentation and keyboard shortcuts. There are two sidebars. Left sidebar contains Fiber Blocks panel, Project Settings tab, and Preference tab. Right sidebar contains Design and Styling tab, Baking tab, and Export tab. There are two viewports, 3D viewport and 2D viewport. 2D viewport contains Canvas, also known as Document, which hair blocks get placed in. It can be used to view different channels on 2D version of the fibers. 3D viewport is powered by physical based rendering, also known as PBR. You can see the real time result of your fibers in 3D viewport and check if it's good in rendering or not. Interacting with viewports is very easy. To switch between 2D and 3D viewport, you can click on this camera icon or select the desired viewport from this menu. To move the viewport in 2D mode, press your mouse wheel button and move your mouse. To zoom in and zoom out, roll your mouse wheel forward and backward. To rotate the 3D viewport, hold Alt key down and left click on the viewport. Then move your mouse to rotate the viewport. To move the 3D viewport, press your mouse wheel button and move your mouse. To zoom in and zoom out in the 3D viewport, hold Alt key down and right click on the viewport. Then move your mouse to change the camera distance to the hairs. Also, you can use the mouse wheel for the same purpose. You can rotate the environment panorama by holding down Shift key and use the right click. You can see a minimal presentation of the environment at the top left of the 3D canvas. There's a little cube at the top right of the 3D canvas that shows the coordinate of the viewport. A canvas, aka document, is the area that hair blocks get placed in. To explain it in an easier definition, it's the area that gets rendered to output texture. If a block be outside of the canvas, it doesn't get baked. Canvas configs can be set in project settings, document rollout. Let's take a look at the parameters and learn what they do. First parameter sets the aspect ratio of your output texture. It's not very handy, but in some situations you will need it. Second parameter sets the orientation of the canvas and it can be horizontal or vertical. Leave it to ITO for the best result. You can use the lock document size option to avoid automatic resizing of the canvas and use the refresh button to update it manually. This is useful for manual positioning of hair blocks. Next two parameters can be used to set background color and canvas color. Also you can use the image as the background. This image gets stretched to fill the canvas area. It's helpful for situations like placing UV atlas on the canvas and create the hair fibers based on them. Use the browse button to open an image. You can reload the image using this button and remove the image using this button. You can turn on overlay mode to draw the image over the fibers. With the next parameter, you can set the blending between document image and solid color. Last parameter lets you add padding to the hair blocks and change their offset. 
To save a project, head to File menu and click on Save Project. Or you can hold Ctrl key and press S. To save a new instance of the project, open File menu and click Save Project As. Or simply hold down Ctrl and Shift keys, then press S. To open a project, head to File menu and click on Open Project. Or you can hold down Ctrl key and press O. On some systems with high DPI and resolution, you may face a very small user interface. To fix this, simply go to the preferences and scale the UI to fit your need. This is useful for 4K monitors. If you stuck with an unreachable user interface, only thing you need to do is resetting preferences using this menu option. Fibershop has an internal ITO saver which saves your project at a certain point. You can use the ITO save tab and preferences to change the interval and duration of the ITO saver. I hope you enjoyed this chapter of the tutorial. See you in the next chapter.